I hope he he won't mind. All right, starting your timer, and here yep. is the question. Yes, please. Right, so if you have read and understood, kindly tell me how are you going to manage the nutrition of this patient? Um, particularly uh, because this patient is having Crohn's disease, I would be looking yes. at the various options. Um, so there are two types mainly. It can be enteral and parental nutrition. Enteral yes. is basically to do with the elementary tract when you are using uh, um, the types are basically oral feeding, which is the most commonest. And there is nas nasogastric, nasoduodenal, nasojejunal. You can also try um, PEG, which is pe uh, percutaneous uh, endoscopic gastrostomy yes. or a feeding jejunostomy as well. And then the parental roots is basically not using the elementary tract. Uh, so you can try uh, TPN, that is total parental nutrition, or peripheral parental nutrition, that is PPN. Yes. Okay. So it, what is the, the advantage of uh, giving uh, total parental nutrition? There are various advantages. We can actually, um, uh, total parental nutrition is considered in those patients mainly which ha who are having gut failure or there is less absorption of nutrients and food substances through the elementary tract. So, uh, in, in uh, there are very specific set of patients who actually will consider TPN. Advantage is that we can basically supply, uh, supplement the nutrition status of the patient and um, supplement the nutrients directly into the bloodstream of the patient. All right, uh, but then? But there are a lot of disadvantages. Okay, uh, just name one or two, a few, three, four. Disadvantages. All right, uh, we'll work on this. Can you tell me what is the constituent of TPN? What does it contain? Uh, TPN basically uh, contains a combination of uh, various elements of nutrition, whereas a combination of carbohydrates, lipids, uh, vitamins, uh, uh, proteins, and uh, trace elements. The main constituent is basically carbohydrates, which constitute around 50%, and li uh, lipids around 30%. Yes. There are other variations where the lipid uh, concentrations can be diluted to low fat TPN, uh, other variations. As what such. are the electrolyte component of TPN? Uh, um, I'm, uh, I, I'd like to come back to this question. Next question. Okay. All right. Uh, this patient on fourth post of day was diagnosed and was uh, forced to be reoperated again. So patient had and also had the diagnosis of Crohn's disease. So considering all this, you are giving TPN. So what are your, what are your complications that you can keep in your mind? Or complications of TPN of, uh, of giving a uh, parental nutrition or any nutrition what can so, happen because patient was gone uh, and was operated twice so uh, parental nutrition the compli uh, sorry uh, yeah parental nutrition the complications can be mainly divided into two one is procedure related complication another one is nutrition related related complication okay Basically, while uh, inserting the uh, catheter, there can be uh, a difficulty in entry and on insertion, there could be a possible damage to the adjacent arterial structures, vessels, uh, there could be even thoracic duct damage uh, and perforation to the surrounding soft tissue structures. And then long-term uh, retainment of the catheter can relate in catheter-related sepsis, there could be thrombosis, there could be blockage um, uh, and catheter-related sepsis. These are, uh, I mean, procedure related. Then deficiency, uh, nutrition related, there can be either excessive feeding or deficiency of feeding. Um, okay. Deficiency of feeding would be, uh, there would be complications like hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, electrolyte abnormalities, deficiency of essential fatty acids. There's a trace. term called refeeding syndrome. Can you define that, please? So basically, refeeding syndrome is uh, electrolyte and fluid abnormalities yes. that are happening in patients. Uh, um, in malnourished individuals who are undergoing yes. uh, refeeding after a long long period of yes. uh, enteral or parental nutrition. It's more commonly seen in parental nutrition.
because the gut has not been used for a long time. And then yes. when we suddenly start refeeding the patient, there can be electrolyte abnormalities. The most commonest abnormalities that are seen are hypophosphatemia, hypomagnesemia, and hypocalcemia, which can result in myocardial abnormalities, arrhythmias, um, other, I mean, confusion and coma and other related complications secondary to this problem. Hypo or hyper because intake will be more. Hypophosphatemia, well, that was given in Bailey. Yes. Hypo hypomagnesemia and hypocalcemia okay all right so can you tell me can you tell me how would you assess or how would you evaluate how much uh, nutrition is required by, for, by the patient or for the patient in this condition um based on the requirements of nutrition ma'am um basically the uh, requirement should be less uh, less than 2000 uh, kilocalories per day yes. and it's Depending on the basis of the nutrition provided by each type of uh, nutrient, that is, fats can provide up to nine nine kilocalories per day. Glucose can provide up to four, and uh, proteins four kilocalories per day. And based on that, the energy requirement of the patient is calculated, and they titrate accordingly. Uh, first, you told me normal, and then since patient is post-op, then yes. what condition? Uh, how much would that be, considering? And the third condition you will consider if the patient is in any kind of shock or not. Okay. So requirement will depend on all these three things. Okay. Okay. Yes. Can you name few complications of giving enteral feed? With regards to uh, enteral feeding, there can be uh, tube related complications like there is uh, displacement, there can be blockage. Yes be kinking or breakage uh, and local skin complications related to the fixing of the tube. Uh, then there can be gastrointestinal complications like diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal bloating sensation, uh, cramping and constipation. Again, metabolic abnormalities like uh, electrolyte disturbances, vitamin deficiencies, trace element deficiencies, uh, and deficiency of absorption of fat later, uh, I mean, uh, uh, fat later absorption of vitamins. So. Can you tell me why would you administer TPN through central line only? Because uh, peripheral vein, um, the DPN is usually high, uh, of high osmolarity. If you use the peripheral yes. veins, it results in thrombophlebitis. And uh, as such, it is actually inserted usually either a central venous catheter or a peripherally inserted central venous catheter and directly supplied in the major veins. What should be the average time for giving TPN to a patient? Uh, Timeline, like for how long can you give? And what can happen if you give for a longer time? Based on the uh, nutrition, uh, nutritional requirement of the patient and nutritional need for an initiating TPN, I guess, um, the, the problems or the complications related yes. with is mainly gut atrophy. There can be yes. chances of syndrome. Again, uh, electrolyte abnormalities. There could be hyper or hypoglycemia. Um, and there could be uh, long-term hyperchloremic uh, metabolic acidosis because the contents are usually uh, sodium chloride, calcium chloride, potassium chloride, and magnesium chloride. So yes. I could hypochloremic acidosis. That is one. And then you are giving it through central line. So there, there are causes. Yes. Again, uh, yeah. Vein yes, because of diabetes. bacteremia and all that, Back that can lead to septic shock. Yes, all those, very yeah. good. Okay. Uh, right. One more question. What is uh, night? Nitrogen. Uh, uh, yes. What is the daily nitrogen requirement? Um, I'm I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. 0.15 gram per kg in healthy person. Okay. What are the signs of malnutrition that you look for? How would you know patient is malnourished now? We can assess malnutrition using the MUST score, or we can other use uh, various other methods of scoring. Uh, like mid mid arm circumference is an easier way to method uh, method to assess. That is a um, malnutrition universal screening tool, which can which takes into consideration the BMI, the weight loss, um, and, and the acute effect. And, um, and there are many parameters that you have to consider. Just yeah. name four four five common ones. Uh, weight loss BMI. Uh, yes, low albumin. Low albumin, Low yes, and healing acidosis, maybe muscle, muscle hyperkalemia, mass. yes. Okay, hyperkalemia. all these uh, will tell you that patient is malnourished. Okay, I need to read about that, right? Yes, I'm quickly going through my questions. If yes, uh, yes I'm sorry, okay, there is mm -hmm. something more. What do you see? 
because in uh, critical care either they'll give you images to read or they'll give you ABGs. So this is my um, I will uh, confirm yeah. that this is the X-ray of my patient taken on so and so date. I'll confirm the name and the age, um, and the time of the X-ray that was taken. This is an obviously an uh, erect X-ray of the abdomen. Yes. What does uh, it show? Arrow, red arrow shows something. It shows it prominent, uh, prominent bowel loops, but uh, this is. I'm thinking that is a, a, a secondary to obstruction, but this is not a classical. Yes. Structures due to Crohn's disease. Structures due to Crohn's disease resulting in the bowel Dilation. obstruction. Yes. That is the obvious. Obstruction and dilatation. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, they say beside glucose, what is the next uh, source in TPN which can give highest energy? Uh, lipids? No, I don't know. Yes, fat, Lipid? lipids. Yes. Oh, okay. Be confident. You know everything. It's nah. just that you have to uh, believe in yourself. Okay. Because I told you, even uh, people who listen to the recordings, they said it's number one. People vote and they said, I don't know how it works, but then you should believe in yourself. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yes. Anyone want to give feedback? I'm sure you yourself has realized what your weaknesses were. Maybe you need to read a little bit more. Just to, to uh, the, yes, the differences. A proper X-ray describing a st uh, stack. I mean, I was looking for that X-ray. I, mean, I knew that that was what was supposed to be uh, expected, but then it, that didn't characteristically show a uh, coin stack appearance. That's why I didn't say that. No. Yeah. That was more looking, I mean, there is complete hospital. This is given in the traditional notes. I have even written this reference in notes. Oh, okay. From, yes, it's Proper. given there. I took the picture and I took it here. Mm. Yes. It is complete. Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, circularis is visible, but I'm not sure that this is coin stack appearance. So I didn't say. Uh, one, two, yes, it gives yeah. coin like yeah. appearances. So. Coin stack appearance. And it's Crohn, so yes. Yes. Characteristic. Right, very good. Okay, now uh, we have come to the last one for today.